Hi, this is Atmir with the Bulletin Board Heroes, the weekend edition for Sunday the 19th of March, Mother's Day. Starting off with the FTSE 100, which is looking particularly um, unpleasant at the moment. We had a key reversal to the downside on Friday. The 200-day line is now curling downwards, as is the 50-day moving average, which has been doing that for quite some time. Below the 200-day line, which is currently around uh, 74.25, we're looking at a potential move down towards that support line projection from November. As low as 70.20, maybe 70.80 was the sort of the charting, uh, at least the sort of support resistance type of target, but that support line projection heading towards uh, the 7,000 area, which is even worse. RSI is oversold now, which um, can be a uh, buying opportunity, but we are obviously waiting on that really with the trigger which would be an end of day close back above the 200 day line i think while we're below that it's probably better to uh, resist um, catching the falling knife especially with the potential of a move towards 7000 moving on to the dax which uh, over recent days has not been as uh, quite as bad as the uh, FTSE. here we've got the market again at an opt october uptrend line there so that's around uh, 14000 uh, 700 and while we're above that sort of support area then the chances are maybe of a rally back to the 50-day line there at 15,200 although that seems a long way away still got the 200-day line rising here and still well above oversold level so uh, there is I suppose in a way potential for a, f a fresh leg to the downside maybe 14,500 but this market so far doesn't look as bad as the FTSE even though obviously there is a scope for a test of the 200-day line at uh, 13,800, if you were as bearish as the FTSE, we would be uh, around 1,000 points low. So there is a lesson to be learned from that. Uh, the other point, just looking backwards, uh, is the way that we had that um, island bull trap island reversal to start the month, and that did work as a sell signal for this market. Funny how the sell signals tend to work rather better than the buy signals. On to the Dow, which... Uh, has to, uh, I suppose, recover from the uh, SVB uh, debacle and then look to the Credit Suisse debacle. Here we've had um, some support coming in there. I, uh, the uh, key here was the November support area, 31,700. We had a little uh, bear trap below that and I suppose we're re holding that zone at the moment. Uptrend line there from October. If we do break uh, below 31,700 on a consistent basis, then the next level down really towards... 31,000, which is near that gap that we had up uh, in uh, October, and then also resistance on the way down. This market not oversold yet either, so there is the scope for perhaps a move down to 31,000. And uh, unless you're very confident about this market, you'd probably be factoring in a move to that zone. On to uh, Bitcoin, which uh, has been uh, the star of the show. Why buy, um, why buy stocks when you can buy uh, something of quality like Bitcoin? Uh, here we've got a situation where uh, we had the uh, test of the 200-day line, fill the gap, uh, the initial gap down from March, and uh, currently just trying to hold above that initial March resistance around 26,500. If we can do that, we'd be quite confident that we'll head up to the top of that broadening triangle from June, which is also the top of the rising trend channel from December as well. 32,000. We were looking for that by the end of next month, obviously with a 1.4% fall today, maybe not... Uh, quite so uh, keen on uh, that uh, it hitting that target any sooner than that but possibility of hitting 32,000 by the end of this month but uh, 30, allowing for the end of next month may be the thing to do given the uncertainties in the market. This stage only well below the 50 day moving average 23,000 uh, or so would really unwind the whole idea of a move to 32,000 and uh, ideally we don't even break back below 25,000 even intraday. Moving on to uh, an extra market for this uh, particular slot. In fact, um, let's try and get the right um, right code there. Here we've got uh, uh, gold, and um, we're waiting, I suppose, after 15 years for this market to deliver its uh, final proper breakthrough $2,000. We had the full storm uh, almost this time last year, really, when that, that obviously led to a rather painful retreat on interest rates, con interest rate concerns. Now that we've got the interest rates in the mix, uh, maybe this is the proper move in the sense that the market uh, may be factoring in rates coming down or just uh, going for quality in the form of gold. Rising 50-day uh, moving average, and we bounced above that. That's around uh, the 1880 uh, level. 
And above that, we're looking for the top of that rising trend channel from August as high as $2,060, at least retesting last year's resistance area. Gap closed by signal over the last week as well, or last couple of weeks, which is helpful. And we've also got the 200-day line rising as well. So in a way, this is almost mirroring, uh, in many ways, the uh, price action of Bitcoin over the recent past. What a strange thing to happen in terms of uh, asset allocation for traders and investors. Uh, next, we have, and after gold, we're going on to the stocks of the week. Obviously, the cupboard relatively bare because uh, the market not looking very healthy. But Altin, uh, what a move we had up in the shares uh, for uh, January. One of the uh, you know, most sort of consistent rallies there. Came back to test old resistance from June around uh, 115, 120 as new support. And we're off again. Looks like we could hit as high as £1.65 at that um, April resistance line projection. Maybe it's a bit higher than that, actually. But uh, 165 maybe by the end of next month, could be on the cards there for Altin. Especially while we hold above recent resistance in the 50-day moving average at £1.25. So above £1.25, as high as £1.65, £1.70. On to Ananda, which looks as though it's uh, rebounding after its recent acquisition news. Here we had a push to new lows uh, towards a quarter of a penny, but it uh, looks as though support's come in at that uh, July support line projection from 2021. Initial target here towards 0.4, and then after that, maybe on a two to three month view, as high as 0.6 at the top of that broadening triangle from back in September last year. If you're cautious, maybe wait for uh, the RSI just to push above the uh, neutral 50 level, but just near, near near that there at the moment, and also for an end of day close through the 0.37 level to break the initial resistance for March. A stock which uh, keeps on getting hit by the bears, but uh, tries to bounce back is uh, Bitstack, and obviously, uh, as we don't like the bears, we want the shares to do well. Here we've had a nice rebound off the 50-day moving average, which is now rising around the uh, 1.8 pence level above that. Looking for the stock to fill the gap up to uh, two and a quarter, well, two and three quarter pence actually. That's the top of that December gap down, and then maybe as a best case scenario, but by the end of next month, up to three and a quarter pence at the top of that falling trend channel. But the key here, holding above the 1.8 area, that would be a decent look and an inverted head and shoulders look for this particular stock. We are backed by bullish divergence with that bear trap we had back in February, but a higher RSI trace. So it does look like a genuine turnaround situation for Bidstack. One of the best uh, performers of the year to date has been Sizzle. And it uh, looks like it's bouncing back after uh, testing initial March resistance as new support. Current situation is that we're looking for at least five pence, which is the top of that rising trend channel from September. And then maybe up to as high as six or seven pence by the end of next month uh, if we can get a decent break of the five pence area before the end of this month. But uh, great base there at three pence and uh, good to see the shares starting to uh, deliver on their potential. Another stock which looks like it's uh, resuming its uptrend is uh, Marula. Here we've had a bounce above the Rising 50-day moving average, that's around uh, the 6.5 pence level. That tends to be a decent continuation signal. And uh, the view now is that uh, we could be setting up for a move towards the uh, 12 pence area, which is the top of that rising trend channel from October. If you're cautious, you wait for a break of 8.5 pence, but uh, that turnaround above the 50-day line and also that bounce at RSI 50 suggests that Maruda is already on its way and uh, 12 pence could be hit as soon as the end of next month. A uh, well, I'd say a surprise mover of late uh, is um, NFT, which uh, had a decent move on uh, Friday. Uh, quite impressive, obviously, given the state of the market. But in fact, it'd be moving all week. And we had an unfilled gap to the upside to start February. And uh, that was really the start of the, uh, the whole rally that we've had. Current view is that we're looking for a decent move, uh, perhaps up towards as high as three and a quarter pence over the next uh, four to six weeks. Uh, that would be at the top of a rising trend channel, which I'm just about to complete now from back in uh, the early part of last year, about a year ago. And the top of that channel there, up, up to three and a quarter pence, the bottom of the channel around the 50 and 200 day moving average level at a penny. Uh, but uh, that May resistance line projection looks like looks as though it could be hit well before the start of this May, given the current 
momentum there. Verditech is next, and here uh, another stock which is sort of fighting back against the bears. Good to see an unfilled gap to the upside there on um, Friday. That was preceded by a gap closed by signal and a bear trap hammer candle there around the uh, point uh, five pence level. That was uh, over the start of the week, and we're looking for at least 1.2 pence, perhaps up to the 200-day moving average at 1.3 pence for Verditech with the bullish divergence also pushing the shares higher. But the real signal there was on the 13th of last Monday, actually, with that gap close and the uh, hammer candle that came the session before it. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.